changing tack a little bit. So would you mind sharing your personal longevity program? Uh, what is it you do to stay healthy and uh, extend your health span? Great question. I'm glad you're not asking me what I do to stay unhealthy. So yeah, let's do well, the healthy let's, bit. Let's do the um, healthy bit. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I you know, for, for many years, I was very skeptical of any claims that of increased lifespan for humans. Um, mm. We just didn't have the evidence. And, you know, I, I would say publicly that we had nothing that you could put in a bottle or inject in your arm that has been proven to slow aging. Mm. Now, that's not, that's not necessarily not just health benefits. Of course, there's many things that do that, but but to actually slow the rate of human aging, and um, I think that's probably still the case, with the exceptions of the things that we all know about. Unfortunately, I, diet and exercise, and um, the, the the power of exercise is extraordinary compared to most of the manipulations, at least which we do in in, in mice. Now in worms. We see unbelievable things. We see five-fold extensions in lifespan. We see worms that should have been dead 40 years ago, 40 days ago, excuse <laughs> me, crawling around on a plate, looking very active. I mean, we see miraculous things in the invertebrate models. We move to the mice and it's, it's more incremental. Mm. And so then moving to myself, I think, well, the, ev the evidence for exercise as an anti-aging medicine, if you like, is overwhelming. So I, I do that. Right. I exercise. The evidence for, and I, obviously some of this is still hypothesis and still under testing, but the em, evidence for um, nutritional diets, um, time restricted feeding, for example, is something that I think many people are waking up to the possibilities of. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do that. I, I, I take vitamin D, but I, you know, I, I, I wonder about that. We've seen beneficial effects in worms, but obviously we need to be careful with vitamin D. I think, and I think that for, in particular, as, as I get older and anyone over the uh, 65 age group, I think deficiencies uh, very common, mm. especially in my own home country of Scotland, where there's no sunshine and probably not much <laughs> vitamin D in the diet either. Uh, deficiency <laughs> extremely common. And, and then you're, you're really elevating the risk for a whole host of age-related diseases. So I, I, I take the vitamin D occasionally, but, but not much else actually. And, and one of the reasons why is some, I, I, it, it's hard not to be influenced by what you see in a, in a Petri dish with, with a worm. And one of the things that we saw is that when we, we took individual uh, interventions, compounds, nutritional supplements and so on, and combined them together and fed them to the worms that we would start seeing an incremental benefit from one going to two, maybe from two going to three, and then everything would crash. The more interventions we put in there, the worse things got. And, and, and one hand-waving explanation for that is that you basically overwhelm detoxification systems, uh, you know, systems that just have to deal with these uh, apparently advantageous interventions, but there are downsides to them all. And when you start combining them together, so I, I do worry when I when I see people uh, get out their, their tray of interventions going to, you know, uh, 10, 20, 30 in, individual things. And I, 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 I do worry about that. I do worry about the interactions between those things and whether you could potentially be overcoming the, the, the systems that you're activating to be of, be of benefit. Those systems then become overwhelmed uh, when you when you, you have too many interventions. So not much, I'm afraid. Sorry. No, no, that's really interesting. So I, a couple of questions on that. Uh, so you, you don't take AKG? Not yet. Not yet. The first author of the paper does and has done. So yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I probably will at some point. I, as I say, I'm kind of waiting for, for Brian Kennedy's uh, clinical trials and then uh, they'll make the jump. Right. Um, <laughs> and So you said intermittent fasting. Uh, can you talk just a little bit about what your protocol is for that? Oh yeah, I mean, I'm just following the work of Sachin Panda and and I, you know the advice of uh, uh, you know Eric Verdon, the CEO of the Buck Institute, who's very yeah. much uh, studying the effects of metabolism on aging, uh, not just NED but but especially ketone body metabolism, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know so what I'm learning from from Eric is that uh, if you are avoiding food for fourteen to sixteen hours, you're essentially moving into a ketogenic metabolic state. Mm. And there are benefits from, from, from doing so, not just energetically, but the, the, the ketone um, molecules themselves are signaling molecules and they're, they're having a beneficial effects by, you know, signaling that we are in a different metabolic state and there's knock-on effects and, and Eric and others have published beneficial effects 
on aging itself and also on Alzheimer's disease models. And I want to cite John Newman at the Buck Institute for, for those studies. So, um, yeah, the, the 16 hour fasting uh, seems to be beneficial uh, at the clinical level. And there seems to be a, a, an emerging biochemical explanations for why that's the case. So in simple terms, skip breakfast, have a very late lunch, you're good to go. Right. Okay, excellent. Yes, now that sounds good advice. Um, so can you talk a little bit about your current research? So you are so I'm because I, you said like there's all these questions we got left over from the AKG. Yeah. So are, are you now looking at these in worms? Well, well, well we are, and you know we are, we are an ac academic lab, and so I, I rely a lot on my my trainees, my postdocs, and my grad students to follow their own tuition mm. and to to ask new questions as well. And and so you know if if no one in my lab was interested in AKG right now. I'd find it difficult to, to move forward on some of these questions. And I, I'm okay with that because there's always something as interesting or even more interesting potentially around the corner. But it does so happen, I, I do have people in my lab who are interested in trying to understand the influence of AKG on epigenetics and therefore on, on, on aging phenotypes. Uh, and we have done a little work, as I say, on, on Alzheimer's disease models in the worm and see beneficial effects there. So yeah, we'll continue to do AKG experiments for sure. Overall, the lab, um, we started as a genetics lab trying to find aging genes, which we, we did, and moved more into this sort of chemical biology approach where you, you're probing aging mechanisms with, with chemicals or nutrients. Uh, and, and that's been really fun. Um, you do discover new biology, mm -hmm. and you're particularly interested in, in proteostasis, this idea that, that protein homeostasis breaks down during normal aging. This is something I've been interested in since a postdoc, actually. Um, and and we, we do find that, that some of the chemicals that extend lifespan are very influential on, on protein homeostatic pathways. And they, they really, I think many of the interventions that extend lifespan, what they're really doing, they're really engaging with their endogenous repair processes, processes that um, you know get rid of the garbage like autophagy and proteasomal functions. Uh, the help in protein folding with molecular chaperones and so on. And, and I think that, that, that that's, that's of particular interest to me personally, just because of, of my research history. But I, I keep finding people who are interested in asking questions about this, uh, especially that sort of interaction between, so what? So what if proteins lose their, their shape with age? So what if they form these aggregates and tissues? And the so what really comes from the, the neuroscience field where we know that many of these protein changes are associated with Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease and Huntington's. And I think a lot of people in my lab right now are thinking about what's the connections between normal aging, loss of protein homeostasis and uh, neurological disease. And if those are intimately connected and we think they are, then the, the chemical agents that we're using to probe the normal aging process could be actually useful in, in the sort of therapeutic domain. And we're complete novices at that second part for the most part. And this is where collaboration is so important. And so I, I, I can't even draw a circle around my lab right now. My lab members are shared with, with many other labs at the Buck Institute and we collaborate with other institutes as well. And so the, the lab is really just a, a focal point for a network of collaborations that are asking that question. What's the connection between normal aging and age-related diseases, particularly Alzheimer's and Parkinson's? Because if we understood that, we could really go after those those conditions in new ways, I think. Right. Excellent. Thank you. So you said you're a conservative scientist, which I understand. So what do you see would be kind of like the, the optimal path to getting some of these interventions of aging into a way that people could take them more easily? Well, I mean, you know, you can go and buy AKG, right, if you want to, yeah, yeah. but but does it work? We don't know. Uh, right. And the thing is that it will take decades to get peer-reviewed, um, you know, placebo-controlled trials of AKG in humans. So how can we kind of square this circle? Oh, I mean, it's a super question, and, and it's something I think all of us are thinking about constantly. You know, near, I mean, obviously, near Barzilai is... is asking the question, can we conduct a FDA approved clinical trial on an intervention and measure outcomes that are consistent with slowing aging? 
extremely important. And, and we, we, again, we, you know, we don't need one metformin. We need 100 metformins, 100 pain trials uh, to, to, to really move that forward. But that, that's, that's very exciting. I mean, in, in the meantime, I think that there's a great drive to find biomarkers of, of aging that we all have confidence in, whether it's, um, uh, you know, epigenetic clocks, whether it's proteomic clocks. I think, you know, there's a great, great prospects there. If, if we begin to feel very confident that we can measure aging using um, techniques that are uh, that we can do within a short period of time, mm. you know, one to three months, imagine that we could have an intervention, AKG, you could give it to a small group of people, small group of, of, of uh, you know, even a small double blind uh, initial trial, but be able to measure aging over the course of three months. Then you have an explosion of potential trials uh, which we would feel happy with. And now, obviously, you know, there's a number component to that, but it, at least we'd start to get indications that things are going in the right direction, that the tissues appear to be responding in ways consistent with slowing aging. For example, measuring the, 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 the in, inflammatory factors that come out of senescent cells. I and mean, if you could really show that some of these agents in a short period of time are, are suppressing the production of inflammatory factors from senescent cell or senescence, super exciting right so mm. i i think that's there i mean i think that's really just around the corner where we'll have ways to confidently measure aging in a short period of time and that's going to give us confidence that we can start making claims i don't, don't just mean commercial claims i mean scientific claims about interventions that apparently are, are slowing aging and then of course you have to think about the safety profiles and so on and that's different for different classes of of compounds mm. With, with metabolites, there's some confidence there that, that they're going to be safe. They're already circulating around our bodies. Natural products, again, it's a subset of those you would consider safe. Um, you're absolutely right, though, when it comes to, you know, your traditional pharmacological, pharmaceutical industry approach to this, it, it's currently very difficult to see how it's, it's, it's going to be done. Lots of people out there with lots of great ideas and, and trying to make change in the way that we, we think about, uh, you know, how to license even these approaches for aging itself. Right. Yes. Yeah. So that's why we, we just, we, we, we take it kind of try it anyway. It's like take NAD and yeah. th these kind of things and just, yeah, no, I, I, and, and you know, and that's, that's a lot that I, I, I would put that in the kind of fun category. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, I, like I would say at least a third of the, the researchers at the Buck Institute are trying, you know, in, intermittent fasting or time limited feeding at uh, any given time so so people are doing the self experimentation right. and, and many are trying you know the, the you know ketone bodies and and uh, NAD and so on and I I, I, I I joke with some of my colleagues that one of the major side effects about talking about these inter is uh, of taking these interventions is actually talking about them. So we're <laughs> constantly in a conversation about, <laughs> did this right. work for you? Did you feel happier or more energetic or whatever? I, I think that's fun. I, I think I, I think it's, I, I think the bigger picture though is is to think about how do we, how do we actually postpone in a meaningful manner or eradicate something like Alzheimer's disease? And mm. that does take more. It really does take more than the anecdotal um, accounts of, of, of things. Uh, now, if you've got 10,000 or 100,000 or a million anecdotal accounts, maybe it'll all add up to something. But uh, I think we still need to do the hard uh, clinical trial based um, work to, to get there. We have to always remember that placebo is 40%. You see 40% yeah. benefit in just about anything with placebo. That's a, that's a high bar to get above, to be honest. Mm. In, in, in biology. So we have to be careful. Right. Excellent. Thank you. So um, Dr. Lithgow, thank you so much for joining us today. That was, that was very educational. So uh, can you tell us, can you tell our audience uh, where they can see what your latest work is and uh, are you on social media anywhere people can uh, we, I, we, we are, but we are through the Buck Institute. And right. uh, I, so I really urge uh, anyone listening to, to go to the Buck Institute webpage Mm -hmm. sign up to our Twitter feeds and our Facebook feeds. Um, we don't just talk about buck stuff. We talk about other really interesting things coming coming through the ether uh, in, in the aging space. And we certainly also talk about our own uh, accomplishments when it's appropriate. So, and and to be honest, uh, if anyone's out there and really interested, just contact me, um, you know, especially if you're interested in doing research or joining the lab. Um, but, but we... 
in, in normal times, we love to welcome people physically to the Buck Institute. It's an incredible facility designed by the Chinese American architect, IMP. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. building. I think we'll get an impression of that from, from our webpage. And uh, we have public tours and we have adult adult education programs and, and programs for K through 12 education. So we'd love to throw our doors open and, and let people know what we're doing. So I'm happy to, to take emails or, or telephone calls to that regard. And uh, I can put you in touch with other people who can be more helpful. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. That's very generous. Okay, so Dr. Lisko, thank you very much. And uh, hopefully we'll get the opportunity to talk again. Thank you. That was great fun. Thank you for your very uh, informed and, and uh, sensible questions. That was great. <laughs> Thank you. And are you going to go and have dinner now? Is it Absolutely. You can find my salad now. tonight. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so thank you. And okay. yeah, have, have a good night. Thanks very much. Thank okay. you. Bye. Cheers. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up buttons and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.